Welcome to a new daily top ask reddit video. Today's topic. Men of reddit, what myth about men is 100% untrue and infuriates you when you hear it? That we can never not be in the mood and if we are we must be sick or cheating. I had an ex who pushed for sex while I had a tube coming out of my back to drain my kidney and was on opiates that make it nearly impossible for me to finish. She got hers though. Did you kill her? And women taking it as a personal insult when we aren't in the mood. My GF got so upset with me that she almost broke up with me. I had been up for like 20 hours by that point and had a headache. I was exhausted. Hoo boy she got mad. That was a fun time. I'm in a lot of girl groups on Facebook, and you'll get some posts from women saying that their boyfriend doesn't want as much sex as she does. You will literally get hundreds of comments saying that he's either gay, cheating, or doesn't love her or doesn't find her attractive anymore. Even when the poster would say that he's on antidepressants or that he's gained or lost a load of weight, everyone tells her to leave him because he's not a real man. I've gotten into a lot of arguments with other women when I tell them not all men are sex mad. Just throw in a you're not entitled to his body and watch the flames of their double standards and sexism ignite like a bomb lol. It's crazy how people will fight so hard against things that hurt them and then perpetuate those same harms against others without thinking about it. It's so easy to excuse our actions and be outraged at others for doing the same. Erections mean we want sex. Even as adults, they can still be random. Or lack of erection meaning we don't. There's nothing more demoralizing than that. Not even random. Studies have been done and even when a man is absolutely terrified, stimulation on the penis can cause an erection. Never heard of a fear boner before. Hence the expression scared stiff. Removed. This one hits home. My wife went on a moncatio with my sister over the weekend and everyone was asking what about the baby. Um, the baby will be with me Sharon, her dad. Oh, are you babysitting this weekend? No Karen, I'm parenting. Get fucked. I gave birth to my son via emergency C-section which then got infected. I was fucked up for a while. My husband took time off of work to take care of both me and the baby and for that first month clocked way more parenting time than I did. After I was healed up I'd go out to do the shopping or run errands and run into friends and acquaintances, small town. They'd be so happy to see me up and functioning and then get horrified looks on their faces when they saw I didn't have the baby with me. Where's the baby? They'd ask. I'd reply that he was at home with his father and they acted like I'd left the kid with a pack of hungry wolves and say shit like, I'd never leave my baby alone with my husband. Why the fuck not? It is his kid too. And if he doesn't know how to parent it is because you cock blocked him from learning. Get out of your own way and let your husband be a damn father. That if we like children but don't have children of our own we're automatically given at the very least a little grilling, if not straight out asked if we're a pedophile. I like dogs too, for pretty similar reasons. Nobody ever asks me if I'm a dog fucker. Are you a dog fucker? Well, thank you for asking. No I'm not, well at least not anymore. Surprisingly bitey. Men can't multitask. Every time I hear that I have to stop what I am doing so I can get angry. Edit, thank you to all who upvoted and thank you even more to the kind souls who thought this worthy of the gold and silver. Oh mayo, but actually no one's really a good multitasker, we all just think we are, Midbusters tested it I think. Edit, thank you, now this is my best post, with I'm the best you come to in second. That we miss signs that women give them because they are stupid. We see them but we don't want to be creepy forward slash jump to conclusions. Edit, or we are not interested. This 1000x over. I used to pick up on signals and not act on them for two reasons. 1. Low self-esteem. 2. I was terrified of taking something the wrong way and getting trapped in a situation where the girl would actually not have been flirting. There's any number of bad outcomes if a girl does something you think is flirting. For one, obviously, she could call you a creep for coming on too strong since you already thought she liked you. For another, maybe you just don't want that one last blow dealt to your self-confidence. It's a tricky situation. I was terrified of taking something the wrong way and getting trapped in a situation where the girl would actually not have been flirting. The core tenet of my life. It's not the rejection, it's being labeled that guy. 
One woman's invitation is another woman's I'm just being nice is another woman's courtesy because I don't actually like you is another woman's fuck me now. It's genuinely infuriating how many people have an anathema about direct communication. So, what are you hoping to get out of seeing me? Fun, hang out, have sex if you're up for it. Turns a fair number of people off, but it does definitely make shit clear. I had a woman come up to me in a bar last night and give me a mild insult and then start making small talk. I was genuinely offended, and had to do everything in my power to not insult her back. She hung around and said a few more things and eventually left. Later my friend said he thinks she was hitting on me. Now I can see that, but honestly a compliment would work a lot better. Man who works at daycare are files. Every year there are people who complain I work there. Meanwhile the women working at daycare aren't even watched, and get away with casual child abuse. I knew one colleague who drinks alcohol on work. Last time I reported, I got a warning about snitch on colleague isn't accepted. That is when I went to a other daycare. Jesus, what a load of BS. As if guys can't be nurturers who like children or even just work there because they need the job. That we cannot parent as well as a woman. That we need a random woman to come hold a man's child because they're crying. That we are babysitting when our spouse isn't with our babies. Yeah that stereotype is so damn dumb. I mean I changed thousands of diapers and it never bothered me once. I was perfectly capable of dressing my kids. I know how to open a jar of baby food. I wash and hang my kids' school uniforms. I'm not looking for a prize but I'm also not looking to be treated like I'm an idiot. I'm a nurse and before that I was a nurse's aide working in a nursing home changing adult diapers every day. One day I was at a restaurant holding my daughter when I realized that she had a dirty diaper. I handed her to my wife so I could extricate myself from the booth, when a woman at the next table made that disapproving CCH noise and said, typical. I stood up, took my daughter back along with the diaper bag, turned to this woman and said, please, lady. I'm a nurse. I've changed the diapers of people bigger than you. And I went off to the bathroom. Men think about sex every X amount of seconds. I'm a grown man with a life, I have more to think about than just sex. Agreed. I also just thought about sex. Yeah my sex thought budget for the day has been expended. No more for me today, no sorry. Dude, my health teacher back in freshman year of high school said something like men think about sex 8 plus minutes out of every hour. I don't know what crock of shit survey she read, but I doubt we spend that much time. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm too busy thinking about the glory of Rome to devote that much time to sex thoughts. It's getting better now, but back in the day basically every guy on TV was a sports obsessed, car forward slash motorcycle loving, beer swilling moron who couldn't function without his wife to look after him and the kids. My wife went away last week for work and I'll have you know that only half my kids got eaten by wolves. You did your best, man. Wolves always hunt in packs, so you were probably outnumbered. Plot twist, he only has one kid. Well, half of one now. That dads are dopey morons barely capable of caring for themselves, let alone their kids. My GF of almost nine years made a joke like this in front of her friends after we started living together. The first time I let is slide, because I wasn't sure what she meant. I asked in private, and she didn't know. She just said it. The second time I stopped and said, who's the one that goes grocery shopping for healthy meal preps that you end up wasting? Who does 90% of the cooking? When was the last time you cleaned the counter, let alone the toilet? She's never brought it up since. I've met dudes that complain about this, but then use it as an excuse to be lazy. If I did that we'd be living in filth. And I just don't have that in me. Been married for years, my wife complained I didn't do enough. I told her I did plenty. She insisted. A parley was struck, for two weeks I did nothing. This was easy since I'm home, and awake, maybe four hours a day. By the end of it, the sink was overflowing, the trash was piled high, the floors were disgusting, the laundry was backed up, and all the other fix-it tasks were completely fucked. She hasn't said a word since. My trick, clean up as you go. If you're the last to use it up, or fill it up then take care of it. Years of taking care of a wood shop translates well to housekeeping. Currently in college, all my girlfriend's dorms are either spotless or absolutely disgusting. Usually the latter. 
All my guy friends have some dishes piled up in the sink and maybe they haven't vacuumed recently but at least they typically have some respect for their space. Fun fact, Nimrod originally meant Great Hunter until Bugs Bunny used it to sarcastically describe Elmer Fudd. Edit, parent comment used to say Nimrod's rather than Moran's. Wow, I was literally explaining this to my wife like an hour ago. Fist bump for knowledge. Daughter to a single dad here. There was this myth I discovered when I was young. It's something almost all my female friends were told, but thankfully not me. The myth is the belief that there are such things as girl business where only your mom or other older females in the family should help you with. As the only girl in the house growing up my dad helped me understand and deal with a great many girl business problems. Meanwhile all my friends had their moms to handle it for them. When my friends found out my dad was sort of in charge of handling those with me they were shocked. They asked me why I didn't have an aunt or grandma to help instead. Well, my aunts all live at least 10 hours away and grandma is even further. I began to realize over the years that there might actually be negative side effects to this girl's only way of thinking. Sure, having another female assist you with those issues might be less awkward and embarrassing, but there's already an inherent awkwardness and embarrassment associated with it. Learning to overcome the embarrassment is part of growing up and accepting your body. Furthermore, I have since grown up and began studying psychology, and done some research into this further for my studies. I'd have to do a more in-depth and wide-reaching survey and analysis to come to findings I'd be comfortable with being peer-reviewed, but I have a theory that the girl's only mentality causes relationship issues later in life. Young girls grow up thinking that there are some aspects of womanhood men not only don't understand but can't understand. It makes them not only less trusting of male partners, but also keeps them from seeing men as equals when it comes to parenting. Sure, if you're a mom of a young girl there's no reason for you to not continue helping her with all the complex feminine issues she's going through. Just be careful not to make her think her dad doesn't empathize or understand too. Don't make him this distant third party who will never get it, or someone who should not be involved because he has a penis. That's the same toxic female attitude that causes soccer moms to call the cops on a dad when he takes his daughter to the park to play. Men can parent too, and they're surprisingly good at raising young girls on their own. Edit hash one, thank you to the guys who have sent PMs to say thanks, and to the few who asked for some advice I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for the gold. Edit hash two, thanks to everyone for the awards. I am shocked at how big this has become since I posted it. I will reply to all the award givers in time but I'm in my phone right now. Thank you again. Adds to the myth that all men are grossed out by menstruation and even the mention of it will send us scurrying. I shared a bathroom with my sister growing up. And I'm a scientist I think I'll be okay. Also, growing up with it being normal lets us help out when needed. As a college tar I always had a few things on hand when teaching long lab classes, including hair and tampons.